Hi, I hope this video finds you well. Today we are going to be working on a coding bat problem called array two has 12. So we're given an array of integers and we want to return true if there's a one in the array with a two somewhere later in the array. So let me sort of be hasty here and sort of uh, think that this question is asking me um, indirectly if there is a one or a two in the array then I want to uh, essentially affirm that that, that, that that exists. So my, my of course, this is in haste and I'll tell you why later on, but we'll actually check what, a, uh, what, 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 your, um, what your approach may be um, sort of somewhat impulsively. And, and later on, we'll actually use um, Python Tutor, uh, which is of course a code visualizer to see why that may not be the case and how we can actually fix the problem. So first, of course, we think, well, let's, let's actually iterate through the array, right? Uh, working on the basis of uh, first principles here uh, in that we know we're going to have to iterate um, or rather traverse the array in reference indexes in the process of which we actually reference the, el the elements themselves. So we're iterating through and uh, essentially we want to check if, uh, if, if any given element is one, um, then we also want to check if uh, a two exists in that array. So well, one and two must exist in the same array for us to actually return true. That's the supposition. So we say if any given uh, element referenced by its index, which is why we're actually prefacing by the name of the array. And then of course, I, and I changes its value each iteration. So it represents a different index as we iterate through and therefore also references a different element corresponding with that particular index. And so if nums of i is, of course, uh, let's say one, then what do we want to do? Well, let's actually have some way to signify that a one was actually in the array. So we're going to have a Boolean variable called one, and we're going to give that a default value of false. And if, of course, any given uh, element referenced by its index, or if nums of i is equal to one, then we will essentially set the default value for the variable one from false to true, or in other words, we will update the initialization. And of course, if it's if it's one, then we'll we'll return true. Otherwise, um, and let's actually put this uh, else in a little more um, a more beginner friendly format. So we'll say well else. Or we could we, we don't have to put else in fact we want to check if both of them are true um and so we can't say else otherwise that would essentially check uh this or this right that's what else means otherwise and so we say okay well you've checked if one is any given element um but now we want to check and we want to use the same reasoning and we want to check if uh if i is any given element as well so if i is equal to two then one uh, or at, at the, the, the Boolean variable, which is keeping track of two would be equal to false, or rather it would be equal to true because we're signifying that a, uh, that a, that two is present in the array. And let me put braces, although I don't need to, and I'll tell you why shortly as well. But um, so here, as we're iterating through, we have a, we have a means by which we can check if nums of I, that is any given element, reference by its index of the nums array is equal to one, will return true for the one variable, which is a Boolean. And if uh, nums of i is equal to two, then we'll return true for the two uh, variable, which is of course a Boolean. And we would assume that if both of these are true, then one and two are present in the array. And in that case, we'll say, well, if, if nums uh, or if, if, two, if one is equal to true, and, and uh, two is equal to true, uh, then of course we, will, we would want to return true for, for the entire program. And so we'll just say return true for the entire program. Otherwise, that would mean that one or the other is, is essentially equal to false, in which case um, we can just sort of return false. Now, you'll see that when I run this program, I, the majority uh, of the results I get are Oops, so actually we have to make a Boolean variable for two itself. Actually, I forgot to do that, but you'll see a majority of uh, our results here, our outcome is green and that's perfectly fine, but we get a couple reds and I'll show you why, I'll show you why. So 
let's actually go into, um, let's open another Python tutor visualizer here and hopefully we can sort of transfer our code without, without any problem. I know I'm not going to be working with methods in, in that particular, um, in that particular uh, program. So it may be a little problematic, right? Um, right, or actually let me speed run it and this sort so we can review. So we had, we had an integer array, right? It's called nums and it's equal to, let's say it could be equal to anything. And what we did was we, we used a for loop to iterate through the entire length of the array. And as we were iterating and sort of peeking in these elements, we said, well, if any given element is equal to, is equal to one, um, then we want to set, uh, then essentially we want to set one equal to true, which is of course a Boolean variable we don't yet have. Um, otherwise, or not otherwise, but if, if nums of i is equal to two as well, then essentially what we wanted to do in that case is, is essentially set uh, two equal to true, which is of course a Boolean value, which, which we'll have at the top, right? So we have Boolean one and that is equal to true. And we have actually the default value for Booleans is false. And we have a Boolean, uh, let's see, we have Boolean two, which is equal to false as well. And so if one or two are sensed as we iterate through or as we traverse the array, um, one, the, the variables which are keeping track, the Boolean variables rather, which are keeping track of one or two um, will essentially be equated to, uh, will be equated to false and, or actually true. So after it's all said and done, remember we wanted to say, okay, well, if, 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 if one is equal to true and, and, and two is equal to true. And in that case, we'll actually print out. And I print out because uh, I can't actually use return uh, without there being a method. And this is of course, the, the program layout here that I have for this visualizer is not in a method. And so here we're just going to return um, true, right? If both of them are true, that is to say if both of them existed in the same array, um, else I'll say, well, um, and actually I can just put this here. Uh, otherwise I'll simply return false in my print statement. Yeah, now I'm going to visualize the execution and see what happens. So two and one, in fact, do exist in the same array. And so if I skip over to my last um, iteration here, it shows that the print box shows true. Um, which is perfectly fine, but if if of course a if of course a uh, you know only a one existed, um, then that would be somewhat problematic, and you'd see that as I as I iterate through my last um, my last would print out false because a one and two are not present in the array, but you'll notice here that um, not here but you'll notice here that I actually so this one is giving me a problem. Um, it's giving me a problem, even though two and one exist in the same array, what's the deal? So I go through here and I actually, I put this, I update my, what my array could be. And, and I say, okay, well, here I have these values, but I wanna now test it against these values. And so I visualize my execution, so to speak. And I say, well, what's the deal? And the deal is that you'll notice um, that this prints out true but it's actually expecting a value of false. And it's expecting a value of false because it's the wording of the program itself, you'll see here that given an array of ints return true, if there's one in the array um, with a two somewhere later in the array. And that's so important with a two somewhere later in the array. So what this is trying to say is if there's a one, that's great, but only return true if a two exists somewhere later in the array. In other words, if you have a one present in the array, two cannot come before the one uh, at any particular index. That is to say, if, if you have a two before a one, you wanna return false. And that's exactly what we have here. We have ones, that's fine, but we have a two before. It should come later in order for us to return true. So what do we wanna do? What do we wanna do? Um, let's see here. So in this, uh, in this case, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to IntelliJ. 
and we're going to work with the IntelliJ bugger to sort of solve this. So essentially, um, so we, we know we're going to have a for loop, right? Int i is equal to zero. Um, i is less than nums.length. And i should be incremented by one. Now, nums, of course, is giving me an error because nums doesn't actually exist. We can, of course, change that by actually having an array, which we know would give us or let's just put in some random numbers and then play with them later on. So we're going to say, look, if nums of i is equal to one, as we iterate through, we don't want to check. I mean, of course, we want to check if two exists in the array, but we also additionally want to check if um, if two is somewhere after the one, in which case we'll return true. But if it's before the one, it will return false. So this is a little more complex than just returning true in the event that a two exists alongside or with a one in the same array. Um, and so what we want to do if, if, if i is equal to one, um, we want to check if two exists somewhere later in the array, in the array. That is to say after the one, somewhere after the one itself. And the way we'll do that is we'll use another for loop. We'll use another for loop and we'll say int i is equal to zero. Uh, I should be less than dot length, increment i by one, and have our for loop here. It's giving us an error because i is already declared, and so we don't actually have to use int i. We can just use i because uh, in this block of code, which is of course the for loop, uh, a variable declaration, a de declaration for i has already been present. Uh, so I guess we could, uh, so, so, so at this point, you'll see, and this is where it becomes crucial to actually understand, uh, to actually understand what the heck, it, what the heck a for loop is. For loop in this particular case is having these variable decla declarations for i and i is actually representing what index we're on. And so for this one here, we're checking if two exists somewhere in the year. So we're going to use another for loop. And the idea here is, we want to start looping after the one. So if we come across a one, which we do, we want to have another for loop, which doesn't actually start from the beginning of the array, but it starts from where one was sensed. So one was sensed at nums dot nums sub i, because we know that if, if nums of i is equal to one, then and only then can we enter this if statement. So it must be that that nums of i um, is in fact where one was sensed. And so what we'll do is we'll just set, okay, we're going to start our iteration from i, because that would be the same i that we want to start looking for the two. And then we'll, so, so this for loop starts from here or any other place where one may be sensed and it starts iterating onwards. And that's essentially when we would check, um, that's essentially when we'll check if, if, if any uh, element after the index which held the element one. Um, so we'll just, we'll check if two exists after that point. And of course, if it does, um, we'll set one equal, or we'll set two equal to true. And of course, if we're inside this if statement, then it must be that, uh, that two is equal to false. And at this point, at the top here, we don't actually have these Boolean variables, but we can actually put them here. We'll, we'll, we'll give them the value default for false. We'll say this is false and this is true. Uh, or actually, both of them would be false in this case. And if nums of i is equal to 2, 2 is equal to true. And of course, if 2, um, yeah, I don't think we want to have this here. We want to say, well, if we're inside this block, then one would equal to true, taking it away from the default of false. After it's all said and done, we'll essentially um, we'll say, okay, look, if if one and uh, if if one was equal was equal to true, um, and two was equal to true, um, then we know that 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 this was only the case if one came after or if two came after the one. Otherwise, we would have different values, right? Um, and so we would simply print out um, true, right? Else, of course, we'll just,
else will print out false. Okay, so here you'll notice that one and two are, although present, two doesn't actually come before the one. Um, and so when we print this out, we should actually get a value uh, of false, but we get true. Um, why do we get true? Well, let's see here. If one is true and two is true, and let's see, one is equal to true if we're inside this, and two um, is essentially equal to true if it's sensed inside the for loop here. Um, we should be getting false. Why don't we? Why don't we actually run this through the through the code visualizer and see see what's up? Right. This could be a little could be a good exercise, a detour to take. Um, right. And so we'll edit this code, and we'll say I feel like this could make help us understand it much better. So we'll take this code here and we'll run it through and um, we'll say, okay, well, let's, uh, let's, start, uh, let's start debugging, right? So we'll visualize the execution. Actually, I, I forgot to put a curly brace. So here we have two uh, default values for uh, for two Boolean default values to false, one and true respectively. And then we have a reference which refers to these, these of, um, an array of numbers. Of course, you recognize that the index starts from zero while the elements uh, themselves, uh, of course, are contained uh, within those um, sort of, within boxes, right, sort of. And we, okay, so I, for the first, for, for the first for loop, i is equal to two, and we judge if that i is equal to one, which it's not. And so what we do here is we we go back and we don't do anything. We don't enter um, we don't enter this for loop here. And then we check if this is equal to one, and i is now equal to one, so we're on the first index, we're here. And we'll check if this is equal to one. Well, it is. And so if it is, we essentially we set one to true and we check if two exists somewhere later in the array after the one. So we're starting our, you can see here that we've set I to one. So we're starting our loop iteration from where we actually sensed the one and we're gonna go onwards from there. So here I is equal to I, right? I is essentially equal to, in this case it would be one, right? So i is equal to one. And we say, okay, if nums of i is equal to two, return true. So we're here. Well, of course we're, so let's see. So here, nums of i is equal to one because that, that's what we've initialized it to. And then we increment i by one after the for loop executes. We're not gonna increment it now, we're gonna increment it later. So it, it, then, it then checks if nums of i is equal to two. And nums of i is in fact not equal to two because the index at one is not equal to two. And so we jump back. And then now i will be equal to two. And so we'll check if the second index, which holds an element, which is two, is in fact equal to two. We'll return true for this one, right? And you can see the value has been updated from false. You'll see before, it was false and now it's true. So both of them are true. Um, in other words, a two comes later after um, a one. And it keeps doing this, it keeps checking. And after that checking is done, it essentially snaps back to, uh, to where it was before. And then it jumps out of the for loop because by that time, I would have been an entirely different value. Um, and that would of course be not less than those not length. So here we say, okay, if, if one is equal to true and two is equal to true, return true, otherwise return false. And since they're both true, in other words, two was actually was followed by a one, um, we return true in, in So I guess I guess uh, I was misunderstood there. We, we should have, returning true was, uh, was actually a good idea. Um, so just a couple thoughts here. Let's let's actually um, edit our code here to sort of represent 
uh, what we wanted for, to represent. So we recognize that if if one is equal to true, then we use another for loop, um, and we don't initialize because i is already initialized, and i will equal to i, right? Whatever that was, i must be less than nums dot length so that we don't walk off um, the edge of the array, and we increment i by one. And so this is a new, a new for, uh, for loop that has been formed. And here we can just say, well, if, if nums of i is equal to two, then we'll essentially just return, we'll set the Boolean variable holding the value for two to true or holding the value of false by default um, to true. And we will essentially, yeah. But of course, if we're inside, uh, this if statement, then one is equal to true as well. And so then we run this again and we get all greens. Uh, but you'll note here that we're actually equating it. We're sort of hard coding the values and we don't need to do that. Um, this, this sort of, this implies that one and two are true. And if we use the exclamation mark, it sort of negates that in that sense, it says that they're false. So we can just do that. And of course, if we're returning only, or if we have one statement within an if, statement, um, we don't actually have to include the curly braces. And uh, you'll see that, um, yeah, so we have multiple statements in this if statement. So it doesn't, it's not good to sort of remove the braces in that case, but we'll still get um, all greens. <laughs>